This is Jamie Dyer on Vintage Media Millennial from Old Time Review. I was extremely saddened to hear that Network Distributing, also known as Network DVD, recently went into um, liquidation and ceased trading. They have been the go-to place for archive television and British film for the past 25 years, especially if it was niche or obscure. They were certainly my go-to place and how I discovered so many different things. Um, I bought so many items in each of their sales pretty much up until a few years ago when life kind of takes over and you have to put that money towards other things. But um, boy, did I enjoy it um, while it lasted. I saw so many things that I would not have seen otherwise, thanks to network. Obscure things that you didn't even know existed um, certainly of somebody of my age group, I'm 33 years old. I had no idea what Indoor League was or anything of that nature. I mean, things like the Paper Lads, um, which was this cute little sort of mid to late 70s thing. A lot of the stuff hardly ever broadcast, if ever, on television uh, since its initial broadcast or in the last few decades. Um, obviously, recently, some TV channels have started to broadcast uh, things like the, the 1950s adventure series from ITC and Sapphire Films. Um, people have started to see those mid-70s, maybe kids shows, you know, like Shadows. But for a long time, certainly in my teens and 20s, they were the only place uh, to get hold of such things and reasonably priced as well. Um, but what did it teach me? Well, it taught me for a start that um, a lot of things we think of as like modern conventions actually started decades ago in TV that barely anyone sort of remembers. And I think as well, it also taught me that there are many actors out there who've got these massive hits that are always broadcast, right? I'm thinking of actors like David Jason, for example, if it hadn't been for Network, I wouldn't have known that he did, um, I think it's called Edgar Briggs or um, Lucky Fella. You know, I wouldn't have known about these things. We would have just known him for the things that he's known for. And that's the same with a lot of different actors. It, they allowed you to see the journey in which these actors went on. Yeah, not every series that they're in is going to be a hit, a big thing. But there are some gems in there um, alongside the mainstream things. I mean, everybody remembers Cat Weasel, for example. I'd not seen it. It hadn't been broadcast on television. I watched it. It was a revelation. And the special features they put in, wonderful. And in recent years, they've started to put things on Blu-ray, remastered, um, all the, the 70s kind of cop shows and stuff, the Jerry Anderson things some of which is actually pretty obscure. I mean, when you've got things like Four Feather Falls that hasn't been seen on TV for decades, and there I am, able to sit down and watch it on a DVD, I don't think any other company um, would have put that much effort into that stuff. I mean, they um, used to put out volumes of series that had a high volume of episodes, um, soap operas like Emmerdale Farm, for example. I've seen the first like 30 episodes or whatever it was of Emmerdale Farm because of network. ITV3 are pretty much probably never going to go back there to that. But thanks to network and their six or seven volumes, um, it you know we're able to see the beginnings of a landmark soap that most channels just don't touch. You know, I haven't touched for years because times move on. Now, obviously, with that, they did stop at a certain point, and they did this with some things, um, like with Crossroads, for example, until recently when they released, what was it, like a 100-disc set of Crossroads. What other company do you know would do that? And I think they sold them out, right? Because fans just lapped it up. It was just there, you know, and, and that gave us a clue box set they did recently. Incredibly niche 
but full of celebrity names, uh, a great fun show, great for nostalgia, but also great for people like myself who like that kind of um, older aesthetic, I guess, where things are a little bit more, um, I don't know, a, a little bit more rootsy and a little bit less flash um, and less... You know, it's a thunder and lightning strike in an animated show or something. What a legacy they leave. Uh, the many hundreds of releases. The comedies I didn't even know existed. George and the Dragon, um, The Larkins, which is currently being played on TV. I'm looking up here at my collection and seeing things like A Fine Romance and all of those ITC series from the 50s. William Tell... Ro the Adventures of Robin Hood, Sir Lancelot, uh, The Buccaneers, and into the 70s, short-lived series like The Zoo Gang. They released Rupert the Bear at one point. I mean, absolutely wonderful. And although they are gone, you know, all of those releases are still out there on the market. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to the stock now um, that they had left over. They'll probably get sold on elsewhere so i would look out for that um it's it's disappointing because um they re they recently released another volume of the jack hargreaves program i think it's is it out of town is that the one um lots of things that mainstream providers even on streaming don't touch and network for a long time were as i say the go-to for that stuff. So are you, dear viewer, a network buyer? Um, please do let me know. They started to do newer releases in recent years, probably to try and widen that fan base a bit because there were people like, like myself who were buying these things. Um, but I think sometimes they, they wanted to kind of appeal, you know, to a larger audience. And at times they did. I mean, I was reading... Um, about Tim Worthington and how he was sometimes brought in, uh, you know, to help with these releases. And he'd be interviewed by local radio stations about the Owl Service, which is a very weird series, along with Children of the Stones. Um, these are landmark pieces of television. And actually, um, to, to touch on children's television for a moment, a lot of those things are labelled as, as children. So therefore, they're not going to get repeated on anything. So Network was the only place where you could buy this stuff. And, you know, they didn't care who bought it as long as somebody bought it. You know, there was going to be somebody um, who had an interest in this thing, whether it was someone who remembered watching it, someone who's heard of it, or someone like me who was like Children of the Stones. What is this? Now, it's worth noting that not everything was great um there is some questionable material in there from back in the day but i'm i'm just glad they they didn't discriminate with that stuff we just got to see everything because everybody everything has a fan you know um pathfinders in space city beneath the sea uh, those series are hardly the best production values but they're fun series that have um, have some merit to them, you know, not new shiny merit, but the merits of their time, you know, wonderful stuff. So I'm really sad to see that this has happened. And I hope that uh, someone in the near future, they can either come back or somebody can take the reins of it because they will be dearly missed in uh, the community of people who absolutely love archive television because i've seen comments saying well now that they're gone who's replacing them where where is this long lost archive stuff um wh where is it going to be released well time will tell won't it